With the Equality March in Washington, D.C., which is a big gathering of LGBT um, uh, luminaries, what do you think can be taken back to the communities from a march like that? We can be in D.C., you know, all we want, but it ends up being what can we bring to bear to our elected officials who represent us locally in D.C.? And they need to see that we are organizing, that we are supporting candidates who are supporting our issues, that we're supporting businesses that are supporting our issues. That's a huge dynamic that actually can change um, the face of a movement. Harvey's old message of you must come out could change the face of our political situation overnight. Even if 90% of us came out to everyone that we talked to, if we were not, if we were, as the president said when he gave Harvey the Medal of Honor, unashamed, um, unafraid, openly gay, um, you know, Harvey's message of, of hope is a message of this is who I am, I have tremendous self acceptance, celebrate me, and we have power to, 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 to really change things. Why do we have pride? At, at all when there's so much acceptance out there. How do you counter that argument and, and, and how do you counter the argument that pride parades don't really advance the GLBT cause? You know, 30 years after Harvey was killed have no more federal equality than we did then. So the laws do not say that we have acceptance. The laws do not say we have equality and when you're young in particular, and the law says you can't serve in the military, you're less. And the law says you can't get married, you're less. And the law says you can get fired from your job just because you're LGBT. Then what that says is to that young person, don't accept yourself. Um, pride is the one amazing thing that can counter that. When I was 17, um, after Harvey was killed, it was my first induction into feeling a tremendous self sense of self-worth. When I went to a pride parade at, where I went to school in Washington, D.C. at S Street and, um, and, uh, and Connecticut Avenue and there was a drag queen, Ella Fitzgerald, who got on stage. There was only a few hundred people, but I felt empowered. I felt, um, I felt like, oh my God, I can follow Harvey's message, my uncle's message to me. What do you want your legacy to be? Oh, I, I want my legacy to be the collective legacy of our generations that are alive today. And I don't say generation, I say generation. So the young people, the elders of the community, and those in the middle. I want our collective legacy to be that we made Harvey's dream come true. You know, oftentimes people say, well, you know, Harvey never got to see um, in San Francisco the, uh, the full acceptance of the LGBT community. He started it, but he didn't get to see it. But no one starts that unless they actually do see it. So Harvey saw it. He didn't, he didn't get to live to, to, to see it. It manifests itself, but he believed in it. And that's where we have to be today. And so hopefully my legacy is not going to be a Stuart Milk legacy. It'll be a legacy that belongs to all of us. We're the Chrome Divas of Orlando. We're a community service group, women's motorcycle riders. We do a lot of things with the community, but we're basically a women's group that just love to ride and have fun. What type of uh, charitable events do you do throughout the year? Um, one of our major organizations we work with is Safe House of Seminole County um, for battered women, abused families, and things like that. So we do a lot of great things. We're a new club, only less than six months old, and we already have probably 30 members in our group. Seeing everyone turn out and support the community, that's what empowers me. Seeing what last year we had 45,000 people here, we're hoping to have 50,000 to show that we're here, we have a voice, and we can make things happen. What do you think the trajectory is for the Obama administration as far as don't ask, don't tell, lifting that ban? Where the administration wants to see this policy be defeated is in Congress, um, and that we do see um, a lot of light. Uh, we have both Senate hearings that were called for uh, this next session and uh, congressional hearings um, led by my congresswoman, uh, Susan Davis. And so we hope to see this come to a vote uh, by the end of 2010. I hear you're going to Washington, D.C. tomorrow. What is your message tomorrow? The opportunity to wear my uniform um, in an equality march on Washington. Um, just 
The vision that that gives to service members who are still serving um, under the current policy, um, I think that's my message, is that soon they will be able to do just the same. What is the new message that you think that we should be sending as a GLBT community, especially at events like Pride in Orlando and throughout the, the country? Now more than ever, the community is going to be um, what we need to focus on, having a strong community, being there for each other, and, um, and, and projecting a, a, a great public image. If you could impart one message to the community, one wish to the community, what would that be? Really to be there for each other would definitely be my message if that's all I could put out there. Because whether it's coming out in an area that is very homophobic, whether it's serving in a military that doesn't condone you, who you are as a person, whether it's you know growing up in a very religious family, um, the, the most painful and the worst experience is, is learning who you are without having support. So definitely the message to the, to the community would to be there for each other. The president said, together we have moved closer to that day when no one has to be afraid to be gay in America. He said last night, I am here with a simple message. I'm here with you tonight and today. For even as we face artists extraordinary challenges as a nation, we cannot and will not put aside issues of basic equality. I've said this before and I'll repeat it again. It's not for me to tell you to be patient any more than it was for others to counsel patients to African Americans petitioning for equal rights half a century ago. Those are powerful words. When you look back, on these years, you will see a time in which we will put a stop to discrimination against gays and lesbians, whether in the office or on the battlefield. You will see a time, you will see a time in which we as a nation finally recognize relationships between two men and two women as just and as real and as admirable as relationships between a man and a woman. There is no more poignant message than the president said last night when he said, when he reminded us of the victims of LGBT hate crimes, and he said, he said next week, he will be signing the Matthew Shepard Act and it will become a crime.